It's a freezing February cold day, but the roach and perch are feeding here at Factory Bank out in the Fenlands. Now, one man who knows how to catch them extremely efficiently is Mike Pollard just behind us. Now, in recent matches, he's been using squats to great effect, and he's been catching big bags of fish and outscoring his competitors on a regular basis. So let's go find out his little trips and tricks to help you catch more fish this weekend. Right then, Mike, freezing cold day, and let's see if we can catch one more fish. There we there go. You are, didn't take it long at it's all. Been like that all this session, hasn't it? Yeah, it certainly has. We've had about ten pound of roach and perch today. Good quality roach, up to about three, four ounces, and the perch to the same stamp. Now it might not sound too big, but there's a lot of tiny fish in here. And by catching fish of this sort of stamp, which is two or three, two or three ounces bigger than a lot of the fish in here, you'd be winning matches. Right then, so let's let's take that little fellow off and get him in the net. So first things first, Mike. Let's have a look at this rig. Talk us through the basics of the rig. Let's go from the top down to the bottom. So what have we got in terms of the elastic, Mark? Well, the elastic is the number three elastic. Yep. Set loose and lubricated so as it's nice and smooth on the small fish and it runs through the top two sections. Yep. Now I'm fishing low nine, uh, 0.09 diameter spar silk shot line. Yep. To a 07 hook length. Yep. 24 B511, 4B10 flow, and just with a few little uh, stots spread out along the line, I've got a bulk of three number 10 stots, and I've got one, two, three, four number 12 stots between the bulk and the hook. So what are you hoping to achieve with that shotting pattern there, Mark? That what I'm trying to achieve there is a light fall between the loose offense of squat. It's very important that you're fishing your hook bait falling through your loose feed that you've catapulted out there over probably a metre square area. And obviously you've got feeding fish, or, or roach what we're after targeting, roach and perch, and you're targeting those fish in an area, and those feeding fish are drawing more feeding fish. And so as long as you're loose feeding all the time, and laying your rigging amongst your feed, and you've got fish feeding, you should catch throughout the match. You mentioned that, obviously, I mean, the temperatures today, they're just above freezing. You're looking two, three degrees of that. There's been a howling wind. I mean, we can barely feel our fingers. But you just mentioned then, Constantly loose feeding, is that, yeah. is that an important part That's then, a key factor, be it anything, even if you're fishing hemp, squats, pinkies, you've always got to keep some feed falling through the water because you're attracting fish, if you've got feeding fish and you're feeding, you're attracting more fish, but if you're not putting feed in, they'll mop up the feed and then they'll settle down and go and they're not going to draw fish. So if you just keep feeding a little bit of bait through the water, you're constantly drawing fish in because they're very curious what's happening to see the other fish feed and if there's feed there for them then more fish come. And is that a costly process then in terms of bait? I mean how much would you go through? I mean we've got we've got a pint, pint and a half tub there, how much would you go through in a session? Well, there was a pint and a half of squat this session and we've probably fished maybe three hours and I but I haven't used half a pint. And yet I've been constantly feeding squats out there all the time. So and lots of squats. So you're looking two quid with the bait and you're, you're catching oh, a fish and chuck. Oh, two quid within five hours, easy. Normally a pint of squat will cover you for most matches. Excellent. And I know that to start with, you mentioned earlier when we were having a little chat, to kick start it and just to get a few fish going, you do put a bit of ground bait in. Just yeah. talk us through what we've got here then, Mark. I'll just hold them towards the camera. But what have we got yeah. here? That's the natural brown crumb. Yep. And then I use, I mix, these three mixes is my out and out roach mix or my fen mix, mix for all these drains. Brown crumb. Silver X Natural Roach and Frenzy Lent Match Black. And I mix it, if it's one part, a bag of Frenzy Lent Match, match Black yep. to half a bag of Natural Roach and maybe the same, maybe a third of a bag of Brown Crumb. Yep. Mix all together loose first of all, add the water, over dampen it because the Brown Crumb soaks up a lot of water. And so if you over dampen it, it becomes a little bit drier. Loosen it up, run it for a riddle and then you're ready to go. And that's what this mix is here. Excellent. Already knocked up. Put a few loose offerings in, a few squats, a few pinkies, maybe a few grains of hemp, because every now and again you might loose feed a, a pouch of hemp to try and settle the fish. Yeah. And there you have it, and it's a lovely mix. Brilliant. And what, what does each component add to, the, to your mix? Because what, what, one thing you do need to work out when you're using grommet is what each one is adding. So what does each thing... Well, the match back, the frenzied hemp, has got a lot of crushed hemp in it fine. Yep. And, and roach love hemp, they're addicted to hemp, it's a drug to it. Yep, so that's so that. that gives it the base. Yep, so that's that one. Silver X. Silver X, in there, is hardly any feed. And the thing with the Silver X is, why add the brown crumb? It gives it feed. Yep. But there's flavourings in the Silver X, in the roach, the original roach, 
that attracts the roach. Yeah. And obviously they get there, but it doesn't fill them up. Yeah. But you want to give them some food content, so I always put a little bit of brown crumb. Summertime, I may put a little bit more brown crumb to those mixes I spoke about. But as a rule, I'll always put a little bit of brown crumb in with the mix to give it a bit of food content, be it winter or summer. Excellent. Fantastic. And finally, um, when, 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 when are squats at their prime? Because obviously certain baits, you know, such, when would you use squats? When would you use pinkies? What's the advantage of squats? Well, squats, I mean, the water's a little bit clearer now. So normally, if the water's got a tinge of colour but seems clear, squats brilliant. But once the water becomes murky, so you probably can't see more than three or four inches down, pinky becomes a better bait. But you can always put pinky on as a hook bait and still feed squat. Excellent. It's harder the other way round. You never feed pinky and fish squat as a hook bait. Excellent. But normally it's the, it's the clarity of the water. If it's clearish, although it's got a tinge of colour, squat will outscore pinky nine times out of ten. But if it's very coloured, then it, it is always pinky. Brilliant, fantastic. And as Mark's proved today in his net of fish, Squat isn't all about catching the tiniest fish in the venue. It can pick out the better stamp fish. And as Mike just explained, look at the conditions. When you turn up, have a look at the water and work out which bait you're going to use. So follow, those bait, follow that ground bait technique. Use the same sort of rigs as Mike just explained. Feed it fairly often and you'll catch plenty of fish. So my name's Tony Gregorius. This is Mike Pollard. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again soon.